Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for this video we have the how to overclock and undervolt the RTX 4060 video, a video that some of you actually requested by quite some time. Sorry about that, I had several other videos in the making, um, many things went after this, let's say that, but I'm here finally doing it. So let's firstly start with the common questions. And just because of that I'm gonna leave you with today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mo, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. The first common question, and actually the most common, let's say that, is will this break my GPU? No, no. we are overclocking for sure, but we are not messing with the voltages. At least, we're not messing with the maximum voltages that the card can achieve. So basically, we're just messing a bit with the frequencies inside the same voltages that the card was made for. Meaning that the voltages that we are using were made for the card to be working 24-7 for several years straight without a single issue. Although in some scenarios we can increase the power limit a bit, so if your PSU isn't that great, you might be, well, you might want to take care of that first, or at least make sure that your PSU is enough. And I mean, I'm, I mean enough not in terms of power of, of wattage, let's say that, because there are some 500 watts PSUs that are really, really, really good, and there are some 700 or 750 watts PSUs that suck and will actually do a worse job than that good 500 watts PSU. Never cheap out on a PSU. The PSU is one of the most, if not the most important parts of your computer. But no, once again, this won't break your GPU. The second one is, will this void my warranty? No, this won't void your warranty. Firstly, because we are not messing with voltages. We are not changing the VBIOS, which is basically the BIOS on your graphics card. We are just raising the frequencies. And raising the frequencies won't void your warranty. Even if some brands say it will, they can't prove that you overclocked. They simply can't. They can't, they can't just, they can. Well, they can tell you that, well, you overclocked and you can just say, no, I didn't. Thank God. And they can't actually prove that you did, unless you're doing videos like I'm doing right now. And even then, if I'm making these videos about overclocking, if I go and, and send my card back, nobody will say me anything. They will just change the card in case the card is faulty. So, no, nobody's gonna tell you anything and it won't void your warranty, just for you to know. And the third and final question is, will this reduce my GPU's lifespan? And once again, like I told you about the GPU not breaking, it applies the same for the, um, for the GPU's lifespan. In this case, we are actually overclocking, so increasing the frequencies and decreasing the voltage at the same time. So we are overclocking and undervolting as well. I'll show you several settings that you can use and several steps. So, no, this won't reduce the lifespan of your GPU. In a matter of fact, it can actually increase the lifespan of your GPU because you are reducing the voltages for the same frequencies or for even higher frequencies in this scenario, but you are reducing the voltages that will most likely reduce the power draw as well and will reduce once again the heat output. So, less heat output, less power draw, lower voltages will usually increase the GPU's lifespan and not the contrary. So you're good to go on that department as well. Now, as for the overclocking part, you can use NVIDIA's own software tool to do it, but I don't, I don't really think it is, it is a good tool to do it. Sincerely, it is not that great. Sorry, NVIDIA, but it isn't. Uh, you have several other options. For example, if you have an Asus GPU, you can use uh, an Asus uh, GPU tweak and so on. But overall, the best one that you can get overall in terms of, of, of the GPUs, and doesn't really matter the brand of your GPU, you can use, for example, an Asus GPU, um, a Palette, uh, Zotac like this one, it doesn't really matter the brand, but the best software that you can get is MSI Afterburner, okay? That's the one we're gonna use. And in case you don't know how to download MS Afterburner, it, it is really simple. All you have to do is go to Google, search, download MS Afterburner, download it, install it, and this will appear by default. So you're good to go. Nothing really more that you have to do. Now, starting from the basics, the most important thing that you can do right out of the box is go to the power limits and increase it. Okay, to the maximum that you can get. In this case, we have up to 113%, meaning that we have a 13% over the base power draw. 
depending on the model, you might have 115, 120, 110, or if you have a really, really bad model, the power limit can go only, let's say, to 105, or in some scenarios, it might not even go over 100. But once again, this is the most important important part, which is the power limit. Just go to the maximum that you can achieve with your GPU model and apply. So in case your GPU can actually perform better, but it is power restrained, the restraint of power will disappear with this since you're raising the power roof, the power limit. For example, I tested Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden and just increasing the power limit made the GPU go from 2600 megahertz more or less to 2800 megahertz so 200 megahertz more just from increasing the power limit meaning that the gpu could actually perform better but it was power restrained and by increasing the power limit you were already making it perform quite better now the next step is usually the core clock and well with the core clock you should start for example with 50 megahertz 50 MHz is a base that most NVIDIA GPUs and most 4060s will do for sure without a single issue. So 50 MHz is safe, let's say that. For me, I found that in this generation of, of 4000 series cards, all the cards that I have tested, 4060, 4060 Ti, 4070, 4070 Ti, 4080, all cards once again do 115 plus on core. So if you want to start with a base of 100 megahertz to test, you're free to go because they go well over 100 megahertz in some scenarios. If you have a good sample, because it depends on the sample, all GPUs are different. I can buy 10 Zotac 4060s and they are um, physically equal but the binning will be different so some will be able to achieve higher frequencies and others will be able to achieve lower frequencies some might not even overclock so you can try this to begin with if you're not if you don't really want to go with 50 then 75 just start with 100 and in most scenarios 115 or 125 will be good for any gpu that you have on the 4000 series after this you can try and and increase it more and more and more but be aware that your computer might crash your computer might crash all you have to do is go once again and decrease the values open msf terminal once again and decrease the values that you had before because if your computer crashes it's obviously not stable. As for the memory clocks almost any card can do at least 500 megahertz so you can try 500 megahertz to begin with which is the base of the bases and then keep increasing it to let's say uh, 600, if the game still runs okay, 700 and so on, or if you are really impatient like me, just go and try from the start at 1000. If 1000 runs fine, you go and up the values a bit more, let's say 1200. Once again, apply. If 1200 is fine once again and it doesn't crash for, let's say, 10, 20 minutes, then try again. I personally found that most of the um, 4000 series cards that I had would do 1500. All of them did 1000 and most of them would do 1500. This one does 1500 without any issues. It doesn't really crash after one, two, three, four hours of gaming. It is completely fine. These are the values that I found to be the most stable for my card and they definitely increase the performance. Now you may ask, what about undervolting? since for now we are only overclocking. As for the undervolting, we need to use the Curve Editor. And by the way, I had to learn some months ago how to do the, um, the undervolting with MS Afterburner because I really didn't know. Well, we should go here and press zero on the core clock. It is easier this way. Apply and then go to the Curve Editor. Now you have the frequency on the left side and you have the voltage on the right side. For example, imagine that you want the card to achieve uh, 2800 MHz. Your card is achieving around 2600 MHz, like this one does at stock in Banisher's Ghost of New Eden, but you want your card to achieve, to achieve 2800 MHz or 2900 MHz. So 2880, we need 1075 millivolts. This is what we need for this for, for the for the frequency that we want 2880 millivolts uh, 2880 megahertz sorry we need 1075 millivolts so what you want to do is hold shift press with the left button and decrease it a bit kind of underclocking in the snare just a bit let's say 100 is fine more or less it doesn't really matter then if we need a 1075 for that frequency let's decrease for example to 
975 and see what happens 975 and now since we want the same 2880 megahertz frequency with lower voltage we go to the 975 so 100 millivolts less and increase spike it to 2880 2881 the difference is almost null and then you press apply as soon as you press apply the the curve will kind of flatten itself at least after the overclocking or the voltage that you selected so apply bam as you can see the curve just flats after the 975 millivolts that is selected so over 975 millivolts it just goes flat meaning that at 2880 megahertz it will use 975 volts and in this scenario you already undervolted this is it now once again be aware that using these settings when going into the game the game might crash and the game might crash because these voltage might not be stable for you it depends on the model it depends on the binning like i said before all cards are slightly different if this crashes what do you do once again you can go here press zero once again apply go to the curve editor once again and instead of 975 you can try for example 995 decrease a bit let's say 100 and then increase it once again to 2880 or 81 or whatever press apply bam the curve will flatten meaning that you are using 995 millivolts instead of using 1075 millivolts that you were using before uh, that's basically just it it's it's really easy actually it is really easy and well guys i would like to show you more but there's not really much more to show because once again if this keeps crashing you just do the same process you go there press zero then increase from from 995 to let's say 1025 basically if it keeps crashing and so on so on so on till you reach your maximum um or your minimum voltage with stability if i go here on number two it has my profile saved and for me i could go as low as 970. now you can try to raise the frequency for example if you want 3000 it is achievable but at 3000 you might need way more voltage and the performance that you will you will get out of it isn't really well you may keep yourself at let's say 2880 or 2900 at most and decrease the voltage a lot more meaning that you'll have lower power draw you'll have lower heat output so lower temperatures and overall the gpu will perform exactly the same as you'll see in the side by side comparisons in the end of this video that i will show you stock versus oc only oc versus oc plus undervolt which of course will be the best scenario that you want to get that once again uses the curve uh, monitor that you see here and once again if you have any doubts leave them in the comment section as usual i'll answer as fast as i can it's free performance with with these settings we actually get the same power draw or sometimes even lower power draw than the stock settings more performance and sometimes even less heat output so lower temperatures compared to stock so it's a win win situation more performance lower power draw or equal power draw i mean who doesn't want that once again thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video guys and stay for the side by side comparisons The payphone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? Alan Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Had I had this conversation before? Alan, listen to me carefully. 